I have been talking on this mantra, the explanation of it, for many weeks. And today, I have half an hour to go. I would like to finish it up today. So last time we stopped at Zara Zara, Ziri Ziri, which is about um, half a page on the left hand side. You see Hulu Hulu Mara, Hulu Hulu Hirahi, Zara Zara, Ziri Ziri. That's where I stopped last time. So I would like to continue to explain it. As we all know, a mantra or dharani is translated from Sanskrit. And I have been trying to explain the meaning of it, um, the Sanskrit meaning of it. The pronunciation is in an alphabet. It's easier to pronounce it uh, because it's just like in simple English pronunciation. Uh, zara zara ziri ziri but the meaning is quite profound and because this has been a um, mantra that has been translated for more than 2500 years so and this development of Sanskrit since the ancient times has been changing it's just like any languages any language uh, the Chinese language English language they all evolve through the centuries, and some of these words, we don't even know the meaning. So, for example, Zara Zara, nobody knows how to translate it. Uh, it's, the, the meaning has not been clear, so we didn't translate it. Ziri Ziri uh, has various meaning. It means light, it means auspiciousness, it means victory. In other words, it's an auspicious word. Ziri Ziri is an auspicious word. Um, as I explained in the first day when I tried to explain the mantra, one word contains a lot of meaning to it. So people or the practitioners of the Buddhist teaching usually don't translate mantra, don't translate dharani, don't translate mantra, because one word contains so much meaning. Like for example, the word um, Om Mani Padme Hum. Om, that word O-M, um, the, since the ancient translators up to even now, they don't translate the meaning. They just preserve the pronunciation Om because Om means a lot. It means the origin of all sound, the origin of all good deeds, the origin of all merits. Um, so, Om, Ah, Om, Om is the meaning of all. It's the origin of most sounds, so they don't translate it. For example, Padme, uh, Lotus. And the Lotus contains a lot of meaning. Why do they use the word Lotus? Lotus means purity. A Lotus flower is grown from the mud, and yet it's detached from the mud. It's from the dirt, but when it grows up, it's so pure. So, the Buddhist teaching used lotus flower as a symbol of purity. Um, purity is from dirt, but it itself is not attached to the dirt. It's just like in this world, this is a world of mental afflictions, a world of wars, a world of sufferings, a world um, of many unhappiness, and of course, this is also a word of happiness, but happiness is ephemeral, it's short term. Uh, how can we be happy if we know that there is death confronting us, if we know that there is sickness confronting us, if we know that there is aging confronting us? Yes, we have temporary happiness, it's not eternal. So, ultimately speaking, this is a world of suffering. But this is a world of suffering, and who induces us to all this suffering? Who create all this suffering? Is it God, or did we create the suffering ourselves? Um, we carry the karma ourselves into this life, and into the next life if we don't get enlightened. In other words, we always roll ourselves in the paths of reincarnation, the six paths of reincarnation. Uh, carry ourselves with a lot of karma through. Um, 
Karma, you should know about karma. We explained that we've spent a lot of time in explaining karma, common karma, individual karma. Um, so, one word can contain a lot of meaning. So, getting back to this, because I would like to, to finish it today. Ziri, 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 this word contains a lot of connotations to it. It means light as compared to darkness. When you see light from the darkness, you see light, but that is hope. That is, that is um, development. Auspiciousness and victory also, it means that way. Zuru, 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 we can't find the appropriate word for it. Um, it's, Sanskrit has evolved for centuries. We don't know what it means, so we don't usually translate that. Next is Bud. Buddhaya, 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 and Buddhaya. What does Buddha, what does Buddha means to you? Buddha means a, 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 a statue, a wooden statue, a stone statue. Um, not just a material. Bud, Bud means what? Bud means complete understanding of the universal truth. A complete understanding of the whole universe. There's Buddha. The is the person, the person who understand the universe. Do we understand the universe? There is a lot of unknown things we don't understand. The, 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 um, our knowledge only extends to a very limited area of the whole universe. So a Buddha is, or the person who has enlightened himself in the understanding of everything in the universe, not God. He is the person who is completely enlightened. And because he is completely enlightened, he was able to be detached from life and death. In other words, in this process of enlightening himself, he has purified all his own karma. And he does not have to roll into the next path of reincarnation. He's beyond life and death. We, sentient beings, we're not beyond it. We are in life and death. We live this life through and we roll into the next life. As I always give myself an example, I give everybody an example. We are, this body is like a hotel, like an apartment. Or like a hotel, whatever example you want to use. You check in. When you, when you, when you zoom into your mother's room, you check in. And one day you got to check out. You got no choice. You check in, you check out one day. You check in, you check out, life after life, you're changing your form. You're Jung in one life, you're Janet in the next life, you're William in the next life. You change your form, you change your hotels all the time, checking in different hotels. But who is checking in and out? It's the same you. Nobody else can check it out for you. It's the same you that has been rolling into that form all the time. And we don't recognize it. So, what makes us doing that? What makes us suffer? Is it God that makes us suffer? Is the environment that makes us suffer? Is you yourself? You did all this yourself. You create your own destiny. You, you cultivate all these causes. And the law of causality says you have that cause, you have that effect. Nobody else, not God. Don't blame God for it. At the same time, you don't have to praise God for creation. You create it yourself, not God. You, you are your own creator. All through all these lives. So, getting back to this, Buddhaya, 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 it's um, being enlightened, being enlightened. So the Dharani, the Sutra says, you have to pursue enlightenment. Don't be just like a, don't be a sentient being uh, and confused and fill yourself with mental afflictions. Um, going to the, the path of enlightenment going to the path of purification. Nobody else, nobody else can go for you. You have to walk that path of purification. 
the Buddha cannot walk for you. If the Buddha can, he would have saved everybody already. You have to do it yourself. Nobody can write the examination for you and, and, unless you're cheating, but there's no way to cheat. Nobody else can do that. So, buddhaya, buddhaya, that's just to remind you, you got to be enlightened. You have to enlighten yourself. Do it yourself. Next. Bud, buddhaya, buddhaya, being enlightened and having enlightened. Maitriya, uh, Maitriya Narakanti, Narakinti. Maitriya is the merciful one. In, in, if you translate it in English, Maitriya means merciful, compassion, kindness. And, and there is a Maitriya Bodhisattva. Who is Maitriya Bodhisattva? When you walk to the, this temple, when you go through the gate, you walk into an avenue of small the trees on both sides with stone lanterns, and right at the center, you saw a laughing Buddha. We call it the laughing Buddha, the Buddha of happiness, the big belly Buddha. That's Maitreya Bodhisattva. And it's also called the merciful one. He practiced mercy. He practiced endurances. So the merciful one, Maitreya is merciful, not the, not the laughing Buddha. People used to say, that's the laughing Buddha. You got to laugh all the time. Yes, it's the laughing Buddha, but his, his, his practice is mercy, is compassion, rendering mercy and compassion to all sentient beings. And we also sometimes would refer him to as the... Um, public relations manager of the temple because he's always laughing. Now, if you, if, if you have a shop, if you don't practice smiling and laughing, smiling, you can't operate a good shop. You've got to, have, you've got to put on a, a smiling face. So you want to receive all the customers into, into your shop, you've got, to, you've got to have a smiling face. Nobody would hit a smiling face. A Chinese, that's a Chinese proverb saying, nobody would hit a smiling face. <laughs> would you hit a smiling face? No. Narakinti. Narakinti is the blue neck Bodhisattva. Why blue neck? We still don't know. This has been a Sanskrit that's been translated for thousands of years. Blue neck, blue neck. Maybe... Avalokitesvara Bodhisattva in the ancient times appeared as a blue neck Bodhisattva. Blue neck Bodhisattva seems to be a very sacred Bodhisattva. So Narakinti, we've, Narakinti, that word shows in this mantra a few times, at least three times. I didn't count, but at least three times. Narakinti, that means the blue neck Bodhisattva, uh, the, the Bodhisattva of, of, the, of compassion, Avalokitesvara Bodhisattva. Narakinti, Darasinina, Maitreya Narakindi, Darasinina, Payamana Swaha, Darasin, Daras, Darasnin, Darasnina is the courageous one, courage. So the description is when you practice meditation, when you practice enlightenment, you have to be courageous, like a courageous one. Sometimes you despair, you're disappointed, you have to to build up your courage in practicing it, the courageous one. Bayamana is the great mind, the terrifying mind, the one that has the, uh, that's respectable and great. Yeah. Bayamana. Swaha. This word swaha, it's a constantly, a frequently used word in, in mantra, in almost all mantras. Um, they have this word swaha. It means all accomplished. So if you follow this, you are accomplished in the path of purification. So swaha. Swaha is a frequently mentioned word, a frequently used word in a lot of mantras. Swaha. Uh, it also means, swaha means, also means the effect. If you have this cause, you have this effect. Swaha. So next. Sadaya Swaha. Sadaya means achievement, success, establishment. 
So the mantra, Sadaya Swaha, achievement, success, and establishment. Maha Sadaya, Maha means great, the Tashvaha, great. Sadaya Swaha. So in, uh, when, the, when the mantra is approaching the end, it mentions a lot of Swaha, Swaha. That means all accomplished. If you follow this, you will accomplish all these. Sadaya Yogisvara Swaha. Sadaya Yogi, that means establishment and accomplishment. Svara, svaraya, that means the one who is liberated, the one who practiced the yoga and attained liberation. What is yoga? Is it on the TV that people practice all this and exercise yoga? Yoga, that word yoga means in harmony. When everything is in harmony, that is yoga. When your body is in harmony, you have good health. When your mind, when your body is in harmony, physically, you are in physical good, good health. When your mind is in harmony, you are in mental good health. Narakindi Swaha. Narakindi is again blue neck. Mara Nara Swaha. Mara Nara is the destroyer. Mara Nara is destroyer. Swaha. What destroyer what? Destroy what did he destroy? Did he destroy another country? Did he wipe out another race? Destroy it? Did he destroy it in a war? Destroy your own mental afflictions. We have mental afflictions that we have to destroy them. What are these mental afflictions that we have? What are these mental afflictions? The common mental afflictions that we have, without going into too much details, of Vishnana Matrata, of consciousness. We have greediness, we have ignorance, we have hatred, violence, you name them, jealousy, hatred, fear, worry, depression, disappointment, fraudulence, negligence, injuries, arrogance. All these are egoistic, most of them are egoistic mental attitudes, mental afflictions. Don't try to destroy and wipe out another race so that you can occupy the country. That's what we call wars, international wars. Destroy your own mental afflictions. What happened when you have achieved in this, in trying to, uh, or have achieved in successfully destroy your own mental afflictions? You're purified. Your karma is purified. Zira Simha Mukhaya. Sira Simha Mukhaya. Sira Simha is a metaphorical expression. Sira means the head. Simha is lion. Mukhaya means the face. The one with the lion's face and head. And what does that mean, using the lion as a metaphor? In a forest, the lion is the king. In other words, you have to be in control of your own life. The lion is recognized as the king in the forest. Have you ever seen a lion? Have you ever heard? Have you ever seen a lion's roar? I have. I, I experienced one in Toronto when I visited a, a, a zoo many, many years ago, maybe 35 years ago. I was in, uh, that was near Buffalo or something. I, I, I forgot the place. I went to a zoo with uh, some of my friends, and uh, there are a few lions in there. And we were standing about, of course the lions, the lions are in the cage, we're standing about, maybe about a few yards away. And suddenly, the, the, one of the lions, could be the, the, the king among them, the, the leader among, among the lions, opened his mouth and roar. Wow, the roaring is thundering. And we were just a few yards away, we were right in, 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 the, in the wavelength. It's like breaking your eardrums. It, it makes your heart thunder. It, 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 it just breaks your heart, as far as the sound is concerned. And not just the sound that affects me, that makes me remember such a raw. The fragrance, the smell, terrible smell. I don't know why, maybe uh, when it raw, it opened his mouth, and I walk away, I was like a runaway, and after running a few yards, I can still smell, it's really bad. I don't know, you have, you have experienced it right, right in the wavelength of the mouth. And it's terrible smell. 
not just the sound. And I like to share the experiences with, with people who haven't, who haven't experienced it before. It's not just the sound that breaks your heart. It's the smell that breaks your nose. <laughs> and uh, maybe the, the, the lion ate too much meat. Yeah. You realize that vegans, they do not have bad breath. It's people who, New York steak, sirloin steak, pork chop, you know, lobsters, crabs. You open your mouth, unless you always use mouthwash. Terrible smell. Vegans, they eat vegetables, they're better. I'm not prejudiced. You tried it out. Maybe we should do a lab test. <laughs> One side is, 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 is a vegan, vegetarian, and the other side is meat eaters. And start to check the, breath, the, the bad breath. You, you will know what happened. I can always guarantee you, you'll get bad breath from eating meat. How do they raise cows these days? Not in the gray, not in the, in, in the landscaping greens anymore. They put them in, in burrows. They can't move. They put hormones. They're eating chemicals. You are eating what they are eating, actually. Most of these chickens and cows, they're sick before they were, they were sent to the slaughterhouses. And what do you do? You are eating the dead bodies of animals every day, and you don't realize it. Dead bodies. Would you want to keep on eating dead bodies? Chickens, you check into the into, into slaughterhouse websites, how do, they, how do they treat chickens in the slaughterhouses? They hang them up in hooks in the assembly line and slice them. And most of these chickens, I saw them from, from, from the, from, um, don't want to mention the slaughterhouse name. Um, most of these chickens are sick because they're not allowed to move when they, when they raise them. They're not running anymore. They are they're laying eggs every day and they can't even get a chance to see their own, their own eggs that they lay. They, don't, they can't move around. And uh, maybe within one month, they have to grow from a, from, from a tiny little chick into, into, a, into a, a hen, into a fat, a fat chicken. Uh, uh, then they can be sold to the market with heavy weight so that the entrepreneurs can make money. So watch what, what, watch what you're eating. Dead bodies, not worth it. Not worth eating dead bodies every day. Next, Zava Maha Asadaya Swaha. Sava means all, Maha means great, Asadaya means accomplished. To all the great accomplished ones. Who are the accomplished ones? The ones who got enlightened. You don't have to go through the path of reincarnation anymore. No more reincarnation, life and death, beyond life and death. How can we go beyond life and death? Find out more about the Buddha's teaching. The Buddha's teaching is not about getting merits, getting blessings. It's about how to save yourself from loading into life and death again, going beyond suffering, no more suffering. For you and for your folks, no more suffering. Chakra Astaya Swaha. Chakra is the wheel, astaya is the accomplished one. Turn, in other words, other than just enlightening yourself, you got to enlighten others too. What chakra means is the wheel, turning the Dharma wheel. In other words, if you're just talking about saving yourself, that's not enough. That's arahat, that's theravada, that's arahat, just I'm safe, I'm, I'm, I already have enlightened myself to such a point that I'm already beyond life and death. I saved myself. There is a practice like that. But the Buddha said that's not enough. In, 
addition to saving yourself, you have to save all the others. So you have to turn the Dharma wheel. So chakra is turning the wheel. I have read somewhere that one of the major inventions of humanity is the invention of the wheel. Without a wheel, we can't go any further. A wagon needs the four wheels. The invention of the wheel is the most, is the most important, one of the most important inventions of humanity. It spreads the news, it spreads Dharma. Chakra, Astaya Swaha. Padma, Astaya Swaha. Padma is the one who uh, holds a lotus flower. As I just mentioned about a few minutes ago, lotus symbolizes purity. People say, okay, how do I get away from life and death? Well, the Buddha has been talking about no more rolling into reincarnations. How do we get away from reincarnations? You have to learn what the Buddha's teaching is all about, but just to give you a very, very brief, extremely brief, uh, breathing on how to get away from life and death. Purify your karma, like what the lotus is doing. The lotus is from the mud. We're in a world of suffering, but you are able to stand aloof of the suffering and practice the Buddhist teaching. You purify your karma. How do you purify your karma? Where does karma come from? What is karma? Karma is an accumulation of all your thoughts and all your behavior that accumulates into actions, accumulate into effects that make you suffer. That's the karma. If you always perform bad deeds, for example, you're always killing, you're always lying, you always commit sexual misconduct, you do all kinds of bad deeds. I think people here are are adult enough to know what are good deeds and what are bad deeds. I don't have to go through details. If you're always involved with bad deeds, you know, on second thought, we should have gone into detail as what is good and what is bad. Some people have been performing bad deeds his whole life and he didn't know about it. Some people are like that. And even if they know they're performing bad deeds, they carry on because they have been habitually doing that. Like a gambler. If you tell a gambler that he's wrong in gambling all the time, yes, he know it's not right to gamble. His teacher told him that way, don't gamble. Everybody says gambling is not good, but he still keep on going to the casino every day. Um, especially the payday. He got his paycheck, the next day you see him in his casino. The third day, he's trying to get a loan from you because he got it all squandered away. There are people like that. I can tell you a story in Hong Kong that happened in the 1950s. Uh, in the 1950s, there are what they call compradors in Hong Kong, the British compradors. And the compradors are billionaires because they were trading east and west. And there was a Mr. Chen, the Chen family, and uh, a big family. A, family, a family with 30 housekeepers, with a zoo inside, you know, how big and, and how rich the family is. And um, he had a few kids. And one of the, one of the, one of the children, um, adults already, 30, 35, uh, he was a gambler. He liked to gamble. And, 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 the, and, the, and the, the father said, one day the, the father said, son, I have already helped you to repay all your gambling loan. And I make a calculation, is 6.5 million already. In the 1950s, 6.5 million is a lot of money. In the 1950s, and if you continue doing that, I'm not going to leave you a penny when I died. 
And the, the son said, oh no, dad, I, I won't do it again. I won't. Uh, I want to. I know it's wrong to gamble, and I appreciate you paying off my loans. And in order to show that I'm really, I really want to. to I, I'm really repenting, and I, I, I'm very remorseful inside. I want to show you my determination that I'm not going to gamble. He took out a knife and he chopped one finger off right in front of the dad. I, I was just blood spurting out, and they called the ambulance and ran him to a hospital. And okay, after just a finger. So he st stopped gambling, but only for two months. He went back again. And he involved in another loan. The whole family is having a meeting now. We want you out of the family because we can't continue to pay your, your gambling loan. You're out. It's a big family. They have a, a con, they have a, they have a, you know, it's like a family meeting. And the man said, oh, I'm really sorry. He told his knife again to chop off another finger. This time it's going to be real. I, I will not do it again. And that being a very affectionate family, they, they, they forgive each other and they give him another chance, a last chance. He was, he was given a last chance at the chopping of, of the second finger. Two fingers gone. And what happened to him? I want to make this story open. You think about it, what happened. <laughs> it's a true story. All right, I want to go, I want to carry on. Narakindi Vagalayas Waha. Narakindi is the blue neck one. Vagalaya is tiger. It's a metaphorical meaning. It means tiger. Swaha means all accomplished. Mavri Sankaraya Swaha. Mavri is numerous, great number. Sank Zankara Sankara is it's also metaphoric. It's it's a kind of seashells. I don't know how you call it. Uh, there's a special name for it. Mavri Sankaraya, that means is numerous, spread numerous, uh, in great number to a lot of places. Namha Ratna Tarayaya, Namha is to pay higher respect to or taking refuges under. Ratna Tarayaya, that means the three jewels, the Buddha, the Sangha, and the, and, and the Dharma. Ratna, that means three, Tarayaya, the three basket, the, the, the Buddha, the Sangha, and the, the Dharma. Namo Arya, Arya, that means saint. The Aryan race, that word comes from Aryan. Aryan means saint, the saintly race. Aryan, Arya, Ar, Arya, Balokit, Valokite. Valokite, that means to observe. So the Bodhisattva in front with a thousand hands and eyes is Avalokitesvara Bodhisattva. To observe, to observe, to observe, is avalokites, avalokite. Svara, that means completely liberated. Svara, completely liberated. Svaha. So, namaha ratna sarayaya, namo arya avalokites svaraya. So, namo arya, namo arya uh, avalokites svara, that means to pay the highest respect to, to avalokites svara bodhisattva. And this mantra is the, is, is the heart mantra of Avalokitesvara Bodhisattva. People who have been here listening for a long time, you know what it means. Svaraya means liberated, liberation. Liberated from what? Liberated from karma. Liberated from mental afflictions. Avalokitesvara means to observe, to watch. It, it's from, perspect from two perspectives. If you observe and watch yourself, that means you're contemplating, you're meditating on your own mind. In other words, in a Buddhist teaching, you have to know your own mind. You contemplate on your own mind. You're meditating on your own mind. Where is my mind residing right now? Is it in arrogance? Is it in ignorance? Is it in jealousy? Is it in hatred? Or is it in enlightenment? Where is your mind now? Where is that mind residing in? 
You got to watch it. You don't allow your mind to go astray. You don't allow your mind to go to sexual misconduct, gambling, jealousy, hatred, arrogance, fraudulence. You watch your own mind through observing your own mind. When you don't observe it, you're in trouble. Om Sadhyandu Mantra Padaya Swaha. Om Sadhyandu. Sadhyandu that means accomplished. Mantra Padaya that means follow the footprint, walk the path. Walk the path of, sa of the sages. Tread the path of enlightenment. And you'll be all accomplished. Swaha. So I finished this mantra. How many? Three months. So finished it. And next time, we talk on something different. But make sure that you don't attach to the words. Every word, every word, the meaning that I, we explain the, the, the word contains more wider meaning than just the superficial, superficial, the superficial meaning. It means a lot inside. So we don't. So it, in ancient times, the the uh, the um, monks who translated them, they don't attempt to translate the meaning. They just maintain the sound uh, because one word contains a lot of meaning.